Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome to my page. I'm just trying to comment here. Put my link. Okay. Did I put it in there? Okay. I almost canceled the video. Okay. Welcome to my page. My name is Michaela from Paint Fixation in Middleburg, Florida. And today I'm going to show you how I spray with my um, Erlex 5500. Hey, Kristen. Hey, you have not called me yet. Oh, Kristen is asking me if I want to go live with you. That's weird. That's the first time I've seen that. Okay, that's weird. Went away. Okay, so I am outside in my yard. Normally when I spray, I will put partitions around here, plastic or drop cloths or whatever, but it's really nice today. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's not too bad. It's just coming in whoops, a little bit of, um, it's not bad. You can hear my, my chimes, but it's not too bad. So I'm in Florida and today it is, um, only 86 degrees and the humidity is only 46 so it's like the perfect day for spring the only problem is I'm not sure I have enough paint for my linen club cabinet okay Kat, and Kate I'll call you when I'm done <laughs> okay so I am spraying the um, dresser today in cobalt blue and I've already put one coat on here, as you can see, so it's not full coverage yet, but this is already dry and it's smooth as glass. Um, it's a very quick way of painting. If you um, want to get a sprayer and try it out, um, it's very efficient. So the way that I set it up is um, every color that we have in the Dixie Bell line is um, as a different consistency. So like sawmill gravy is really, really thick. So whatever um, pigments it takes to make the colors, sometimes it takes more pigment. And so you get, hi Lisa, um, sometimes it's a thicker paint. So sawmill gravy takes a lot more water to get the right consistency. Cobalt, not so much. So I only had to put about a, an ounce of filtered water with my eight ounces of cobalt. And then I always, 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 always strain it before I put it in my sprayer. So this is my Erlex sprayer. This is how it comes. Comes with the compressor type thing with it. This is a 5500. Um, and it comes with the hose. And the, mine came with two different tips. Hi, Jackie. So I'm using the 1.5 in this, and sometimes for gator hide or thinner products like gator hide or um, not the satin because that's thicker. Gator hide or the flat, I might use the two. But for the most part, the 1.5 does for pretty much everything that, I, that I've done. I think I've only used a two for the gator hide because it's a lot thinner. I am not sweating. I mean, I am sweating, but not like this is, I'm soaking wet. I soaked my head wrap so that my head would stay cool because even though it's only 86 it's still 86. Hi Diana. Okay so I've already got my paint in here. Now let me show you um, some things that oops hang on let me turn off my notifications. One of my daughters is trying to snapchat me. So the first thing you want to do when you get yours is to test it with water because when I got mine originally, um, I put water in it to try and spray with it, and it wouldn't spray. I was getting air, but no water was coming out. So what happened was, this little part right here, I'll take the tube off here so you can see, if I can get it off. Okay, so this nozzle right here needs to always be open. And the one that they sent me had a factory default or factory fault or factory problem. <laughs> it was not, um, it had not been drilled out. So it was solid. And you want to make sure this one also is clean. These are very easy to clean. The inside of this is like a ceramic coat or something. It's like Teflon. 
very, very easy to clean out. So I can go from one color to the next. I'm actually thinking about taking the original one and drilling out that hole and seeing if I can get it to work because then I can put, put top coat and paint and keep them going alternating. alternating. So I'm going to show you how I do this. When you're, when you're um, painting with an Erlex, now I've only used two different sprayers. I've used this one and I've used um, the Home Right Max. That one's a really nice first sprayer. It's, it's under $100. Um, it doesn't have as much functionality as far as your spray pattern and how much you spray. It's kind of a one-off. It just goes and you really don't have a lot of control over it. But I still painted a, quite a few pieces of furniture with it and, and it worked good. I like this one because I have more control over it depending on what I have in the container. Also, when you come on, say hi, so I know you're, so that I know that you're here. And I don't think did I, I did introduce myself. You don't know me. My name is Michaela from Paint Fixation in Middle Earth, Florida. Okay, and I have y'all um, vertical. I hope that's okay. Um, it was the only way that I could get this in the picture. Um, <clears throat> I keep getting off track. So this is your nozzle. Okay, this is your needle. This is what determines. Um, this is like the the um, diameter of the how how big the diameter of your um, nozzle is. And this is controls which way your paint sprays. So if you have your nozzle this way, then you're gonna move left to right. And if you have it like this, you're gonna go up and down. And if you have it like this, it's like a cone pattern. Sherry, yes, it sprays top coats beautifully. I will show y'all, I think I'll probably will spray these um, if, if the weather holds. Um, it does, and Gator Hide sprays beautifully, flawlessly, like glass. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm not going to need these. Normally, if I'm enclosed, like if I, like I said, I'll usually put plastic or drop cloths off. I will wear my mask. I have a, a painter's mask, but um, I'm, I'm out here in the air. I don't need one, and I'm, it's not like I'm doing a whole lot of spraying today. I'm just doing a little bit. Hi, Jason. You like it? Yeah. So it's a game changer. Okay, so this is going to get loud. I'm going to have mine on this setting because I'm going to, I started out going this way, so I'm going to go this way and I'll do a second coat and then I'll show you on the front how you can make your nozzle a little bit um, smaller and how we can change the pattern with going up and down. So the other side I'll go up and down. Jason, did you get the Urlax? I can't remember if you... Um, got the lights or not. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. It's loud. Always spray it off to the side to get it going first. Always check and make sure it's coming out good. I'm going to get on this side. When you're spraying, hang on. So when you're spraying, you want to make sure that you go back and forth. Okay, you don't want to spray like this. Because if you spray like this, you're going to get too much paint in one area. So you're going to, you're going to overlap. You're, you're, you're not going to get an even coat. Just like when you're painting with a paintbrush, you want even coats. So you're going to want to follow it with a straight rest like this. Every now and then I'll forget and get lazy. But for the most part, that's how you want it. That's definitely good. So, again, just going to give it a spray. And I always let go on the edges so I don't waste paint. Okay, now I'm going to turn my nozzle so that it's at an angle. 
Okay, because I'm going to go in these edges. Just like that. How about that? Jason says, no, I'm looking for a new sprayer. I have two, but they only use gallons. Ugh. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to lift it. Do you, it must be, um, is it gravity fed where you don't have to carry the paint? Because that would be too heavy. Okay, so I'm going to bring y'all, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn this around. Okay. So this is the inside. I'm not, I don't care what this looks like on the inside. Hi, Wendy. Hey. So I'm just going to get my edges and get this over here. I'm going to keep it on the round. And that's it, guys. So it's literally that easy. Anybody can do it. I'm trying to figure out why this. Thank you, Kristen. So if you're looking for a sprayer to start out, I would try and find something for, you know, under $100. This sprayer was, um, I believe it was $350. But I, it had $50 off and it had a $50 gift card at Rockler. And they run those sales all the time. So that would be a good place to get it. So with that extra $50, I got me some shop lights. And those were on sale. So I was able to get them for like 12 bucks, And I think they were 50 bucks or something originally. So you can get um, a lot of good deals on it. Isn't that good coverage? really is I am seeing some areas on the side where it's a little bit dry still so the the woods dry but um, this is a really old piece so I am NOT going to worry about that too much and I think I'm gonna be using black wax with the cobalt and then the top of this I'm going to do a faux wood grain because I think I showed y'all before that I have some areas right here that are just not, um, you know, sometimes when you pay too much for a piece, I paid $50 for this and I really shouldn't have, um, I, I should have offered her like 30 for it, but I'm going to do a faux, and now I feel this is coming up right here, I may have to glue that down, but I'm going to do a faux wood grain with this with, um, with uh, the gel stain because the gel stain gives a texture to it because it's real thick and so it makes a really nice um, top. Let's see Sherry. Now um, I have heard great things about the set, the one that um, Dixie Belle carries. I actually bought this one before they started carrying the sprayer that they have. I, I got this a few months before that so this is going to be it for me. This is going to be the one I keep. And Wendy, yeah, we we uh, sell it at Dixie Bell. Um, and Wendy says that she uses uses it all the time. Yeah, that's the that's about the price range. And um, 
And I was lucky enough to get it on, on Rockler with the gift card. So they had, and then I waited till they got their lights on sale. I got the big strip lights, um, and I love them. I have three of those in my room, room in there. So does anybody have any questions about it? I know this is kind of a quick live. Just remember to always strain your paint. It's a 5500. I know. I know what it is. I love it. It's a 5500 and I believe it carry I think it holds a I think it holds 32 ounces. I think. Yes, the one Sherry I I definitely would recommend that one. I believe um Brush by Brandy has used it live. And I know that I've seen Wendy on her page. A lot of the stuff she sprayed is beautiful. So, I mean, for the price that it is, um, you know, and I can always uh, send it with your next order. <laughs> um, but, so, remember to strain your paint. Remember to make sure that it the viscosity is proper. Now, you they do come with a viscosity cup. I didn't do that on camera today because I was in a hurry trying to get out here just in case, you know, we are in Florida and I just want to make sure that we weren't going to have an afternoon thunderstorm. So I just mixed it up. I, I do it by sight with a spoon just to make sure I kind of have an idea of what it's supposed to look like. But they do have a viscosity cup in the box and um, it will show you, it'll have directions on how you pour your paint, you get your paint in it. And then you let it drip out of the bottom, and then when it, it goes into a stream, and then once it starts to drip, you time it. But you can get instructions either with the machine or online. There's plenty, plenty of videos of people doing the viscosity tests. But once you do it a few times, you get an idea of what it's supposed to. Thank you, Kristen. Um, you get an idea of what it's supposed to look like when you're spraying it. And like I said, all the paints need different amounts of water. I find, I think that probably sawmill gravy for me is the thickest paint that I've used. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, <clears throat> for me, that's one of the thicker ones. Um, what else is a thick one? Antebellum blue is thick. The reds seem to be less thick. Rustic red is thicker. So each one is different. I don't thin out gator hide. You do need to thin out the satin because it's thicker. Um, but you'll definitely get a hang of it once you start doing it. And um, if, if you're lucky enough to have a place inside to spray, that's ideal. I would love, if I had a place inside to spray, I would probably be spraying all my base coats because even if I were going to do a blend on this, if I can get my first two coats in like that, I'll do it, you know? So get your first two coats in fast and then, then you can take it inside and blend it. But if you have a place that you can spray inside. Oh my gosh, that would be a dream. Then I would be spraying everything, base coats, top coats, everything. But unfortunately, I am at the mercy of the weather and it has literally been raining here for over a week. Today's the first day that it hasn't rained. Kristen says, knock down the wall. She knows that there's a wall I want to knock down. I, Sherry, I definitely recommend practicing. I practice, first I practice with water. And then I practice with paint. But you can definitely get a feel for it with water. It gives you, you know, because when you're, when you're pressing on the trigger, when it's on, you will get a feel for how far you have to go to get the amount of paint that you want to have come out of it. And also on this nozzle here, so this one here, this is what regulates how much paint comes out. Um, well, it, it's really your fan pattern, not really the amount, but the fan pattern. So when I first went with it, my dots were a little bit too big. And so I dialed it down so that it was a little bit less fan. And then that makes your dots a lot, lot smaller. Because basically it's just a bunch of dots. I see a little bit of a drip right there. But I'll catch that with the sand when it dries. But there's no drips on any of this. Um, and because you can dial it, when you do the diagonal, you get such a small area that you can get into your cracks and up here. Again, I wasn't too worried about taping this off because I'm going to be doing a faux finish and it's very little overspray with this one. 
So I have just a little bit that can easily come off with a little bit of sandpaper. And I also did put two coats of boss on this. I don't think I mentioned that. Yes, the dots are important. So basically, Lisa, when you're spraying with a sprayer, everything is a dot. So if you have big dots, <laughs> you might have drips. Um, I've done that before. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm, you know, I was trying to think the other day when I was using it, why you would ever need big dots. So if anybody knows, let me know. But I like a nice fine spray. And so what I'll do is I'll usually turn this down tight and then I'll slowly loosen it until I have the look that I want it to look like. And I will practice on a board to do that. Not long, Sherry. It doesn't take long to learn. Honestly, um, I've had, I mean, I've, I've had a sprayer. The other one I had, I probably painted, I don't know, maybe half a dozen pieces. This one, I've only sprayed maybe a half a dozen pieces. I did not spray the boss only because the weather was awful. Like it was terrible. I've had these bossed now for over a week because when I was bossing them, I thought that I was going to be able to spray them the same week. And this is literally like yesterday was the first day I would have ever been able to spray. And I didn't have time to do it. Um, because I have to bring my, my tent. I, I probably don't even need this. I probably could do it open. But I don't want the sun to suddenly come and hit my piece. I don't want um, the bright sun to get on here. Um, you can spray boss though. I know people have sprayed boss. And like I said, because it's so easy to clean, even the other ones are easy to clean. Like the Home Right Max, I believe the Home Right Max is very similar to the one, the Wagner that we sell on Dixie Bell. I think they're very, I, I am a little bit. <laughs> Sherry is true. Um, but I think the Wagner is very similar to the Home Right Max. And they are a plastic container. They're not metal like this one. But they're very easy to clean. I, I would take mine if I was spraying top coat. And I had several pieces that I was working on. I would literally leave the top coat in it. Keep the lid on because it comes with a separate lid to tighten down. Keep that on there. And I could literally just pick it up and start spraying. Could you spray a piece in drawers if they do not come out? What, I'm not sure what you mean. What, I'm not sure what you mean. If the drawers don't come out. I have my drawers over here and I tape them. I'll pick y'all up and move you over here. Try not make you dizzy. So here's my drawers. I know that the, there's a glare out here. So here's my drawers. And what I've done, I've already painted one coat on this one. I'll show you all this up close. So can you see this? I'm ha I, I have a glare, so I'm not sure how good y'all can see it. That's one coat. It's going to need another one. But do you see it's so, it's so smooth? And of course, there's no brush strokes. And I have it taped down with some paper. I get, this is a very cheap roll of paper that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, it's very thin, so it works great for this. And I just lay these out, and I'll I wipe them down right before I spray them. Okay, let me see what these. Let me get my glasses. Hang on, let me read this. Oh, Dar, don't be don't be chicken. Don't get that thing out. Yes, I don't see any reason why you couldn't spray a drawer if it didn't come out because what you could do is just what I did. Let me show you. I'll just show you real quick what I would do if, if I had a drawer that wouldn't come out. I'm just going to turn you this way. Okay. So if you had a drawer that couldn't come out, hang on. There. Can y'all see, because I've got, I've got, here, I think when I turn it down, let's see, right there. So I'll grab a drawer. Okay. 
may go in. Let's see. So what I would do is I would tape off your piece and put you, I mean, you wouldn't need this much paper, obviously, but I would put maybe this much paper and leave your drawer, pull your drawer out as much as you could and tape it off. Because as long as you're taped off or you have paper, you can pretty much paint anything. Because the paper just comes right off and it doesn't. Thank you, Dara. Thank you, Vicki. Vicki, I don't recognize you. Are you new? French provincials and the drawers don't come out. Oh. So, Dar with the viscosity... Okay, what I did, even though there was instructions in the, um, and again, this is water. From, I look like I'm sweating to death. I'm, I'm not. This is just water from my hair because <laughs> I like to keep my head cool. I look like a mess. Um, so, Dar, for the viscosity, go on YouTube and look up viscosity test explanation or something in, in that line. You will find plenty of people... There's this one that I watched that was very, very good, and they actually had their phone out with a timer. When they dip the paint, they put the timer on, and then you just wait. And then as soon as it drips, or, you know, as soon as the stream is no longer a stream, you hit your timer, and that tells you if it's the right viscosity for your machine. Very, very easy. Do not be scared. What is the worst thing that can happen? You have to repaint it? How many times have I had to do that, even when I didn't mess up? <laughs> Y'all know me. Y'all know that I don't always know what color I'm going to do or whatever, and sometimes I paint more than once. So go to your Goodwill or your Salvation Army or Thrift Store. Get something very inexpensive, something that you don't mind that gets ruined. Get that painter out, that sprayer out, and practice, because that's the only way you're going to get used to it once you get used to it. Like I said, because I'm in Florida, that's the worst part of it. If I had an indoor warehouse or if I could get in my garage if I could figure out yes Lisa it'll you scoop it and it comes out the bottom you, you hold your finger over it you scoop it and then you let go and then it streams and then it's kind of like when you're do y'all cook because it's kind of like when you're testing now there's wind thank goodness it wasn't here earlier it's kind of like when you're testing um, your candy, like if you're doing candy or fudge and you're testing if it's, if it's done and you lift your spoon up and it drips. It's kind of like that. It's really easy. And then I, I'm telling you, Wendy, are you on here? Do you test your viscosity or do you, you can eyeball it now? Because I think that probably after maybe even just four times, I was eyeballing it. And pretty much once you start spraying, you'll know. Like if you get sputtering, um, if, you're, if your paint sputters, you have either air in there, your, your tubes aren't tight, or you have um, a paint goober in there somewhere, that's why you should always, always filter. I cannot stress that enough. This is the most important thing. I mix my water, my filtered water with my paint first, and then I use my filter over the top of my sprayer, which is on the And so then I, I use this to put my paint into the uh, sprayer itself. So Wendy wings it. You just get used to it. You'll, you'll know. Um, that's why you should practice. You know, if you have a bunch of leftover paint, like little bits of paint, and you're not quite sure. <laughs> Sherry. Are you going to come to my class if I have one? <laughs> How far away are you? I actually had a customer that was going to come today um, from Ormond Beach. She's an hour and a half away. She was going to come for one-on-one um, -on -one instruction, but she woke up with a migraine. So, Camille, if you're watching, I hope you come sometime this week. But um, I guess I could. Maybe we could do like an all-day thing and do a spray class. I am not a professional sprayer, guys. It's, that's how easy it is. Um, you know, when you said that I was a Mrs. Fix-It, don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Lisa, I don't know if that'll happen. Um, again, you'll get you you'll get you'll figure it out once you start doing it. And I use filtered water. Um, I don't have well water, but our water is pretty hard, so I filter it because I figure it's going onto my piece, and so I always use filtered water. See, Sebastian, Florida, the lady that was coming today was an hour and a half away. You, maybe, how far are you from Ormond Beach? <laughs> Y'all just carpool. Hmm. Funny. Do y'all have any other questions about it? Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Y'all see my friend Wendy Hughes come on here sometime, and she's always talking about how I'm not afraid of doing anything. That's not always true, but I don't show it. And my husband calls me like a I'm a bull in a china shop. He gets really afraid when I'm using my tools. He doesn't have any tools. I have a garage full of tools. I use saws. I use chainsaws. I use it all. You see this backyard, guys? Look at this backyard. See all those missing trees? <laughs> all those trees? I cut all those down. I mean, I've had a few of them cut professionally if they were just enormous. But this girl knows how to use a chainsaw. So you must be on the other side. Are you are you more east? I love my tools. What was I using today? Oh, well, I, today was no big deal. I was using drills today. But um, all right. So if y'all don't have any more questions, I'm gonna let you go so I can get this done before I lose light. And um, if you're watching on the replay and you have questions, leave them in the comments because I will answer them. Yes, my husband doesn't, oh, a cement, my husband doesn't use tools. I actually sent my kids a picture yesterday of my husband when he was painting our very first crib. Someone gave us an old crib, and I have a picture of my husband painting it, and that is the last time he's ever picked up a paintbrush. That was 24 years ago. And so um, I do all the, all the stuff, and he goes to work, and he makes the money that allows me to go buy the tools. <laughs> Uh, what I want now, what my next big thing, I want a, a, I have a table saw, but it's very old, and I want one that has, like, all the, all the, I want a fence, and I want all this stuff. So, I want it to be, because I, I, I'm not good at, like, you know how boys, men, they kind of have one of those things like in their brain measurements and they kind of all you know I don't have that I got it everything I got to do everything from scratch I got to figure it out measure it measure it 16 times and then I cut but I get it done I get it done all right I'm gonna talk to y'all later and hopefully um we'll be live in the next couple of days with some black wax on this bad boy thanks for watching bye guys